ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. New EPA rules on waters of the United States could spell trouble for cattlemen. We'll have an update. Plus, a visit to an award-winning cattle ranch in Florida. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping our news this week, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association continues to work against the proposed rule that would redefine what bodies of water fall under federal jurisdiction through a new definition of waters of the United States. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter has more on why this issue is so important to all members of the cattle industry. Water is a valuable resource on farms and ranches all across the nation. The Environmental Protection Agency and the Army Corps of Engineers have proposed a rule that would expand their existing authority over waters of the U.S. This could mean nearly all bodies of water in the country will be subject to regulation regardless of size or continuity of flow. Folks are very concerned about uh, all the different proposals that keep coming out of EPA and uh, the, the continuous uh, over-regulation that we're faced with from our federal government uh, at this point in time. And it seems like every tool and every advantage that cattle, cattle producers, farmers and ranchers have, somebody's trying to take it away from them. This is definitely one of the biggest threats that we have seen to animal agriculture and to everybody who's in land management business in years. We're trying to make sure that our members truly understand what this issue is all about and more importantly, ensure that they get engaged. Almost all activities on open land will now touch a water of the United States under the expanded authority. For the first time, ditches are included in the definition of a tributary and would come under federal jurisdiction. This change could hinder the ability of ranchers to manage their land. It is a tremendous reach and expansion of their regulatory powers. And in fact, on every farm and ranch, there are uh, water depending on the season, the climate, and the time of year. What that means is if you have a, a dry ditch that's now a tributary under this proposed rule, uh, you're going to be restricted from spraying chemicals near that, um, possibly grazing cattle near it, or any activity that impacts that water could now be a violation of the Clean Water Act and subjecting you to fines of $37,500 per day or needing to get a Section 404 or a Section 402 permit under the Clean Water Act, both of which, of course, take a lot of time and a lot of money. I think this rule would affect just about every farmer and rancher, landowner, land operator in the United States as we read it. Uh, our EPA administrator likes to kind of shrug it off and say that's not the case, but that's, that's how it's worded and that's what the language says. Legislation has been introduced in the House and the Senate to prevent the EPA from going forward with their Waters of the U.S. rule. NCBA strongly supports this legislation and encourages all members of the cattle industry to join together in voicing their displeasure over this proposal. Right now it's a proposed rule and it's open up for comments from any American and we are encouraging all of our members to jump in and submit comments to EPA. It's important that EPA really hear from the grassroots producers. We are uh, have a goal of soliciting uh, at least 10,000 comments from around the country from our members and non-members if they'd like and uh, there's a link that they can go to to make a comment. A lot of our producers remember the proposed rule from the Department of Labor on youth working on farms. The only reason why the agriculture industry was able to stop that and just kill that regulation in its tracks was because of the outcry from the countryside to the federal government saying, you've got this wrong, you have no idea what you're talking about, this is going to be detrimental to our industry. That's the same thing that the EPA needs to hear on this proposed rule that they have on WOTUS or Waters of the United States. We have a little bit more time to try to get comments from every cattle producer across the country, which we, we definitely hope that they do. If you have not commented on this proposed rule, I I very much encourage you to do so. Please tell your spouses, your children, all your neighbors, we need uh, thousands of comments to flood into EPA to kill this Waters of the U.S. proposal. Reporting from Denver, Colorado, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. 
The proposed rule will be open for public comment until October 20th, and NCBA will submit comments on behalf of the producers it represents. In addition, NCBA's goal is to get at least 10,000 comments calling for EPA to ditch the rule. Submitting your comments is easy to do. Just go to the website beefusa.org. There's a link there to submit your comments on the proposed rule. And at the Cattle Industry Summer Conference last month in Denver, we heard from cattlemen and women about their concerns regarding the waters of the U.S. issue. We asked producers to share their views on this proposed rule from EPA, and here's what they said. Very scary. You know, it, we don't need somebody <laughs> causing, causing us problems on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, we're going to try to do things right and not do any polluting or not cause any problems, but uh, we, we don't need anybody breathing down our necks day to day. But the waters of the U.S. issue with EPA is obviously a big one. Um, for our own operation, I mean, that could mean that we've got water around, we've got irrigation ponds, we've got, we've got stock water ponds, we've got, we got water troughs on our operation. And all of those could fall under the regulation of EPA. And currently, those are outside of the EPA regulations. So, and we, we deal with the EPA on a regular basis. And to add one more layer of complexity is over and above what, where we need to be. I think it's an overreach on the part of the Environmental Protection Agency. I think it, it will. Uh, their excuse for this is to clarify a couple of Supreme Court cases that I'm very familiar with. I think it will confuse the people out in the country. It'll make regulation much more difficult to comply with. It's definitely going to uh, be a situation where the federal government will not only uh, regulate waters under the Clean Water Act, but they'll be able to regulate the land that that water is associated with. And that's a huge overreach. It's way beyond the scope of the uh, Clean Water Act, and it definitely doesn't clarify the two Supreme Court cases that the EPA says it clarifies. It's a scary thing. You know, we've uh, been doing the same things. We like to improve. We like to do everything right in our operation. But if, if they can just make a big blanket rule change, that would be hard on our operation and our family situation. But, you know, we try to work around everything we can to be profitable and do what's best for the environment. To keep up on issues of concern to all cattlemen and women, why not join NCBA? There are valuable incentives and special member-only discounts available. You can find out more by calling 1-866-USA-BEEF or visiting the website beefusa.org. When it comes to cattle prices, 2014 has been an amazing year so far. But what's the market outlook as we head into fall? Marcus Briggs from Cattle Facts joins us now. Marcus, we have seen phenomenal prices throughout this year on both fed and live ca or feeder cattle as well as live cattle. What's your projections as we move into the fall? Well, you're absolutely correct. I mean, we've seen astronomical price increases this year. Unfortunately, we do believe there has been a peak put in in the feeder cattle market, and we should ease off slowly into the fall. And, and give folks a little of your perspective about what's driving this rally and, and specifically what, what kind of uh, anticipation do you have for feeder cattle uh, throughout the fall months? Sure. Well, we've seen um, signals for an expansion period for the last several years, but unfortunately due to drought and um, a long-term drought cycle, we've been unable to expand the herd as much as we've been trying to. Mm -hmm. This year, however, we've seen favorable growing season rains and mm -hmm. pasture conditions have improved. And so we've seen um, greater intent to hold back heifers at the cow-calf sector. And we've seen um, just, in general, tighter supply. Yeah, I wanted to ask you uh, about uh, retention of heifers. Obviously, we saw some mid-year numbers from USDA. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, how you analyze those numbers and what does it mean for the rebuilding of the U.S. cow herd? Well, um, lower heifers means that there's going to be lower placements in the feedlot, mm -hmm. which in general just means a tighter supply of fed cattle down the road. How has the increase in moisture we've seen across the United States uh, impacted the, uh, the grain markets, Marcus? Oh, we've seen great growing season rains um, pushing the potential for this 
uh, crop year to be over 14 billion bushels mm. easily. Uh, we're projecting somewhere around 170 bushels per acre yield, which should keep corn prices in the mid to upper 380s. Which should be very range. positive for the cattle industry. Absolutely, it? sure. And yeah. then these growing season rains have also really helped um, with pasture conditions. Uh, so forage should be cheaper than normal as you well. You bet. Let's talk about consumers for just a minute. Obviously, sure. uh, we've asked them to pay record prices at the retail counter for beef. Sure. Uh, where do you see this headed in the future? Uh, prices should level off some coming into the next year, um, just purely because there's only so much um, leverage we can take off of the retailer and that consumers mm. are willing to pay. Mm. So we can't stretch prices to any, too much further. And demand has been fairly strong so mm. far at these levels. Mm -hmm. So I believe they should be constant from here forward. Yeah, surprisingly so. So let's look ex-US. I know the export market has uh, driven a lot of this run up as well. Sure. Give us your perspective of what kind of impact that's had and, and what do you see in terms of export, exports going forward, Marcus? Exports are booming and yeah. they're very profitable for the cow sector, or the, the beef sector right now actually. Um, we just recently got full access to Hong Kong markets and mm -hmm. they've been one of our biggest exporters this past year. So we're bullish into the future on exports and need to do more international business. Very good. Well, thank you so much for coming and giving Absolutely. us Absolutely. Thanks for having me. To find out more about the outlook for cattle markets this fall and into 2015, visit the website cattlefacts.com. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Stewardship. Uh, is uh, something that's been instilled in our family for the better part of the past century. We'll take you to Florida to see how one family practices stewardship on their ranch. Plus, a visit to South Dakota to learn how one operation is winning the fight against BRD. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman on RFD-TV. The Case IH Summer Sales Event is going on now, meaning you can turn the heat into red hot savings. That's because all Farmall and Maxim Series tractors, along with our complete line of hay tools, are available with 0% financing for 60 months. But hurry, because while the Summer Sales Event is just warming up, it only lasts until September 30th, 2014. For more information, visit your local Case IH dealer or go to caseih.com slash special offers. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of the land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the Perina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. We don't sit idle, wondering how we're gonna build a better truck. We get out there and walk a mile, thousands of miles, in the footsteps of the guys we build trucks for. The groundbreaking Ram Heavy Duty, with 30,000 pounds of towing and 850 pound feet of torque. Welcome back. Whether it's money, time, or effort, when you invest in something, it's not out of the ordinary to expect a return on that investment. However, a new study shows the beef checkoff, which all U.S. beef producers and importers invest in, is actually delivering some extraordinary returns. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Sharon Alseth has more. For beef producers, their days are often spent caring for their cattle. But when those cattle are sold, one dollar from that sale goes to the beef checkoff to fund programs aimed at building demand for beef, both in the U.S. and worldwide. Now a comprehensive new study shows that one dollar investment is delivering an outstanding return to producers. In terms of the bottom line, beef producers and beef importers are getting a tremendous 
uh, rate of return on their investment. Specifically, what I found is for the overall nine marketing activities, both domestic and foreign, these investors in this checkoff program are receiving $11.20 back on each incremental dollar invested. You know, as a, somebody who's worked with the checkoff for a number of years, I've always believed that the checkoff is a good investment for me and my family, but the results of the return on investment study tell me it's a tremendous investment. We were all pretty excited about the 1120 return for every dollar invested into national checkoff programs. Dr. Kaiser's study covered the data from the years 2006 to 2013, and it showed that the wide variety of national beef checkoff programs all work together to protect and grow beef demand. If you were to cut out uh, the research aspect of it or the beef safety part, it would have a negative impact on all the other uh, aspects of promotion. So we need to be aware that all the pieces work together to create the results that we received. You know, there's some folks out there who might be really skeptical about the checkoff and, and what it does for them on their operation, and this, this gives us that tool to talk to them and says, you know, your dollar, your dollar is doing some good and your dollar is helping market beef both in the U.S. and globally. The $11.20 return for every beef checkoff dollar invested is especially satisfying since it's beef producers themselves who volunteer their time to direct beef checkoff investments. I'm Sharon Alseth reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. One of the great aspects of being involved in the beef industry is the commitment so many cattlemen and women have in wanting to give back to their industry. That's part of the idea behind the National Cattlemen's Foundation and the W.D. Farr Scholarship Awards. Each year, two deserving students win these $12,000 scholarships. It's highly competitive, and at the Cattle Industry Summer Conference last month in Denver, two new winners were introduced. To meet these applicants, to interview them, read their resumes, we're loaded with talented people. And these scholarships are $12,000 scholarships. They're significant help to graduate students. The W.D. Farr Scholarship is an incredible honor. I, I can't even put it into words what it means to me and to my family. Paying for college these days, especially a graduate level program, is very challenging. And this, this scholarship is going to help me graduate with significantly less debt. It's going to give me an opportunity to focus on the things that I'm most passionate about. And of course, that's the beef cattle industry. Instead of having to worry about getting a high paying job somewhere so I can pay those, those loans off, doing things I'm not interested in, this gives me a chance to work for the people I care most about, and that's America's uh, cattle farmers and ranchers. To talk about uh, the beef industry, we really care about consumers, and food safety is the way that I can really take care of the consumers and give back to the industry. It's a great honor. Um, I didn't know W.D. Farr, but from what I've heard and read about him, he was a, truly a, a remarkable person, and to be associated with somebody of that caliber is just um, a great honor. It really does provide for the future. The two recipients today, uh, food safety. Josh has a passion for food safety. Ariel is going to be a law student. Um, you know, very interested in water. Our industry needs those kind of people, and anything that we can do to help them is going to greatly benefit this wonderful business. I would just like for people to know that the National Cattlemen's Foundation has an incredible program here with this scholarship and the rest of the work that they're doing, and I hope that they can support the foundation so that other students such as myself can have this opportunity uh, to, to really take on some big educational dreams. To learn more about the W.D. Farr Scholarship, visit the website nationalcattlemensfoundation.org. Still ahead, we'll take you to an award-winning ranch in Florida. And up next, we head to South Dakota to learn about the effective tools in the battle against BRD. Stay with us. We'll be right back. New Holland is smart for the way you farm. 
And New Holland Round Balers are smart for the way you raise cattle. By focusing on making the densest bale possible, New Holland Round Balers pack more into each bale, saving you time, fuel, and money. Now that's smart. We can also match your feeding requirements with a variety of bale slicing, cutting, and wrapping options to help maximize your time. Plus, with models designed specifically for silage or specialty crop harvest, New Holland gives you the power to make smart choices to fit your farm or ranch. You work hard to get the most out of every hay season to benefit you and your cattle. From mower conditioners to balers and tractors, New Holland has the right solutions to help you make quality hay and forage for your cattle operation. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all the benefits available to cattle producers. It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattleman is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. From Capitol Hill to the far side of cattle country, the National Cattleman provides information NCBA members need. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattleman. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. Welcome back. Keeping cattle healthy is the key to a beef producer's profitability. Respiratory disease costs producers an average of $15 per head per year. It's a major expense that can be combated. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter takes us to South Dakota to see how one ranching family is winning the battle against respiratory disease in their own herd. On the edge of the South Dakota Badlands, the Williams family has carved out a living on a scenic ranch. Despite its beauty, the tough Northern Plains environment can pose a challenge for ranchers like Marty Williams, whose family has been ranching near the Cheyenne River since 1979. My granddad and great granddad were all in the livestock business. And my folks, when they got out of college, they got married. We came down here in, in 1979. Uh, my brother and I, we went to college when we got done we came home and we started expanding we built our background lot my folks were good enough they helped us create an opportunity so we could could stay on the land and try and make a living in the livestock industry we are just off the Cheyenne River and obviously you can see it's fairly rough country we have to manage our grass because it is very sensitive here with shale banks and stuff so it gets to be a challenge just to uh, keep forage in front of livestock. Lack of rainfall in the, in the summertime generally is the problem. Winter is also a challenge for Marty. He works with a small family crew, so ensuring animal health is critically important, as is a solid nutrition program to make sure his cows get their calves off to a strong start. Starting with a good nutrition program that relates back to when we get into calving in the spring, I have a good body condition score in our cows. Therefore, cows produce colostrum. Colostrum produces healthy calves. And we can get them calves off to a good start in the spring and, and give them a chance. Obviously, where we're here, we calve in country like this. Uh, when a cow calves, you're not going to see that calf for two, three days. So he either got it or he didn't. And strong will survive because if he didn't get it right away, he's not gonna he's not gonna make it till weaning. So we try and do it ahead of time by watching the cows and culling and 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 keeping a high plan of nutrition. The focus on nutrition ensures cattle have every opportunity to stay healthy. However, when they do get sick, an animal on a good nutritional plane is better able to fight illness, and a strong vaccination program is more effective in fighting that disease. If we go back and look at, at setting up a vaccination program and combine that with a good nutrition program and a, and a good management program, then we really have, have set the foundation for a, a overall prevention program for respiratory disease. Obviously, if you start with a good immune system, the vaccines are going to 
are going to work properly. Otherwise, if you don't have nutrition, first of all, the, the vaccines are are not going to work near as effectively as as if the cattle are in them in better condition. It really starts to the, the day they're born and having good colostrum. It's like flipping the light switch for the immune system. So if we can start a calf off right with, with good nursing and good quality colostrum from the dam, then it sets the stage for us to vaccinate that animal as his immune system matures. Managing respiratory disease, we, we work with, closely with our nutritionist and make sure that we're balancing our rations. And then, and then we come in with with the Vista once and a Vision 7. And in order for those vaccines to work, we need to start with a high plan of nutrition. We'll have more from South Dakota on effective ways to battle BRD when we come back. Stay with us. Your herd, your business, your family, You've always protected what matters most, so you know how important vaccinations are for healthy cattle. And with Vista vaccines from Merck Animal Health, you know you're covered. No other vaccine works like Vista. Only Vista gives you complete dual action pneumonia protection and complete one dose fetal protection for the entire pregnancy. Protect what matters most. Talk to your veterinarian or animal health supplier about Vista. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right, where it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real and feeding my family a home-cooked meal that's important to me that's important to me and planting the garden and watching it grow Join your fellow cattlemen in sizzling hot San Antonio for the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the beef industry's biggest convention, and it's great for education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the NCBA Trade Show for the latest technology. It's the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in sizzling hot San Antonio, Texas, February 4th through 7th. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. Welcome back. Now let's return to South Dakota and reporter Brian Baxter for more on tools and strategies in the battle against BRD. To Marty, managing herd health is important because of the combination of a limited labor pool and the tough country he ranches in, which limits his ability to monitor cattle on a daily basis. Those conditions mean a proven vaccine like Vista is crucial to success. In the winter and the spring, we feed these cows. We're seeing them every day. When they come come to feed, we uh, look through them all and make sure there's no problems. On summertime, when we get turned out, it is a little more difficult. We uh, see them a couple times a week, ride through them, and, and then you're checking water and, and stuff like that. But it is more difficult in the summertime, but we hope that the practices we did throughout the winter and the spring will carry over and help us in the summertime and 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 that's why we use the Vista once because summertime pneumonia when it gets hot and dry and dusty in the summertime does become a problem by pre-planning it makes it easier in the summertime. When he does have a chance to monitor cattle Marty says quick identification of the disease and rapid treatment are critical. He says that starts with a good working relationship with his veterinarian. I have a good relationship with our veterinarian. If I got a problem, he's on speed dial. We talk about everything and uh, you know if you think you got something going on we're able to uh, hopefully curb it off before it becomes a, a wreck. 
Veterinarians and, and cattle producers work together uh, hand in hand, and the veterinarian tries to, to provide those services that, that make for sustainable relationship and profitability for the producer. And so it, it's, it's early intervention and calling the vets when, when they're needed, but also when they're not needed and go down and ask for advice because veterinarians really work hard to get new information and then can, can translate that to, into useful information for the producers they work with. That information includes making sure you're treating the right disease with the right product in the event of an outbreak. That's where veterinary diagnostics can make a big difference. The biggest thing is, is to know what pathogens are there. So if we go back through and look at, at, at collecting samples and when to collect samples, it really gives us a, a background on, on what vaccines to select and what drugs to use. What we found is, is that there's been a shift over time in the number of resistant, drug resistant pathogens there. And where we seldom saw them, now we're starting to find them more and more often. And, and in a recent survey that we did of, of feedlot cattle, we found out that, that about 4% of the cattle are coming in carrying multi-drug resistant bugs at that point in time. And so that makes respiratory disease management a lot more difficult because we don't want those particular pathogens to spread through the cattle. Dr. Spire and Marty both agree that developing a relationship with a veterinarian before you have a problem and tackling any health challenges early is essential if you're going to be successful in keeping cows and calves growing strong. And I've had so many cases where, where people will call up and say, well, this started a week ago, and then they bring it in. But the best relationship that you can have is where you, you're part of a team, and you're part of a sustainable team for that operation. And a veterinarian can contribute to that operation in a cost-effective manner. Right away in the springtime when you're branding, get your shots in them calves, pay attention to the warning signs. If you got a problem, take care of it early. And then the fall when you're weaning them calves, get another round of shots in them. That's gonna keep those feedlots coming back and buying their calves because they'll know they've had shots and, and they're gonna stay healthy and they're gonna perform. Near Wall, South Dakota, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about winning the battle against BRD and why you should consider Vista in your herd health regimen, visit the website MerckAnimalHealthUSA.com. Still ahead, we'll visit with Baxter Black. And coming next, we'll head to Florida and a stewardship award-winning ranch. Stay with us. Your herd, your business, your family. You've always protected what matters most so you know how important vaccinations are for healthy cattle. And with Vista vaccines from Merck Animal Health, you know you're covered. No other vaccine works like Vista. Only Vista gives you complete dual action pneumonia protection and complete one dose fetal protection for the entire pregnancy. Protect what matters most. Talk to your veterinarian or animal health supplier about Vista. This isn't a job, it's a calling. Your hard work helps feed the world. Being linked to those who care for the land is our calling. For more than 175 years, John Deere has been a proud partner of the cattle business. That's why we bring you special NCBA member discounts, so you can get the right equipment, strong, rugged, versatile, and ready to work hard. Talk to your John Deere dealer to learn more about your NCBA member discounts. John Deere, committed to the land, committed to your success. Want to help elect officials who understand the needs of the cattle industry? Then visit BeefUSA.org and check out the NCBA Political Action Committee online auction page. There, NCBA members can view and bid on a wide variety of exciting travel and merchandise, and the funds go to support NCBA's work in Washington, D.C. You must be a member to contribute to NCBA PAC, so don't wait. Join today.
Welcome back. When you visit with ranching families, one value you often hear about is the desire to leave the land better for the next generation. That value is a hallmark of most all cattlemen and women, but it's especially true of those who are winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. As we continue our special series introducing the seven 2014 regional winners of the award, we head this time to the Sunshine State of Florida and the Two Rivers Ranch. Centered on the convergence of the Hillsboro River and Blackwater Creek, Two Rivers Ranch has been in the Thomas family for more than 80 years. This cow-calf operation was started in 1932 by entrepreneur Wayne Thomas. Since then, it has grown to encompass 17,000 acres and includes timber and sod growing operations, as well as a hunting lease enterprise. I'm the third generation and my son is the fourth. My dad was eight years old in 1932 when my grandfather, Mr. Wayne Thomas Sr., bought the first 7,500 acres. And of course, my dad just had a love of ranching and cattle and that was all he ever wanted to be was a rancher. Just having the opportunity to uh, take care and manage the land and look after all the livestock, something I've always wanted to do since I was a little boy. I'm really proud and blessed to be a part of the family and have an opportunity to do something like this. As you look across the pastures, it's hard to believe that Two Rivers Ranch is on the doorstep of one of the nation's largest cities. Two Rivers is less than 20 miles from downtown Tampa and has over 7 million people living within 50 miles of its boundaries. In fact, a significant portion of the water that flows into Tampa comes directly from sources on this ranch. Hillsborough River supplies pretty much about 90% of the city of Tampa's drinking water, 80 to 90%. We have a very high profile here as a result of the importance of our natural resource. The integrity of our watershed and the fact that we are blessed with high quality water is a very important part of our business model here. So we have pure water from a pure place and we plan on keeping it that way. At Two Rivers Ranch, they've developed a unique way to help educate the public about water and land conservation. On their land, the Thomas family created an environmental education center called Crystal Springs Preserve. Crystal Springs Preserve is a 525-acre wildlife preserve. It's at the northeast corner of Two Rivers Ranch, and we uh, teach environmental education to over 50,000 students a year, kindergarten through college. It's been a, an amazing opportunity to enrich their science academics and also to help them understand the stewardship of the land that goes on in Crystal Springs Preserve and Two Rivers Ranch. We think it's a, a very reverent approach towards the management of the natural resources. It gives the public an opportunity to come in and enjoy the beauty of the river in the spring. It gives children a chance to learn about our most important natural resource, which is water exposes them to science and hopefully sparks their interest in education and their curiosity levels and uh, helps uh, promote their knowledge base. In the late 1980s, the Thomas family found another beneficial use for the water on the ranch. They began bottling it for drinking, turning this natural resource into a valuable crop. Zebra Hills is the main spring water brand in the state of Florida. Uh, we bottle roughly 600,000 gallons a day of the spring water you know, through our spring that shoots out roughly 40 million gallons into the river on a daily basis. The uh, bottled water business is very important to us because it gives us the ability to uh, fund the educational activity at Crystal Springs free of charge for essentially hundreds of thousands of people a year. Two Rivers Ranch uses proven land management techniques to enhance the cow-calf operation. The improved pastures are actively managed through controlled burns and seeding, while herds are limited and rotated so native ranges and multiple ecosystems are not overworked. The cattle are in here for a period, try to graze it down, and then we move them to another area and let them graze that down. It gives us the ability to defer grazing. So uh, we're grass farmers, essentially, and we move our cattle around and try to keep them in, in large groups, come into an area, utilize that forage in that area, and then vacate and rest that land for a while. 
The Thomas family has demonstrated their commitment to protecting and improving the land upon which they make a living. And the goal is to continue the conservation efforts that were started generations ago. I have some big shoes to fill. You know, fall after my dad and my grandfather and my great grandfather. The, the history of our family has come so far and means a lot to me and a lot of a lot to a lot of people. Stewardship is uh, something that's been instilled in our family for the better part of the past century. And we take that as a sacred responsibility that we have not only to ourselves, but to our fellow man. And I'm certainly committed to it. There's a little bit of blood, a little bit of sweat, and a little bit of tears on just about every square inch of this place. We started out standing on the shoulders of giants and hopefully someday somebody will say the same thing about us. That'll be great. Over the next few weeks, we'll introduce you to all the 2014 regional winners of the Environmental Stewardship Award. And don't forget, their stories and video replays of all of our stories and shows are available online anytime. To view those stories, just visit our website, cattlemantocattlemen.org. Just ahead, we'll hear from the cowboy poet Baxter Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back. There's something wrong. His head is down. He's clearly stressed. He's worried sick about BRD. That's why there's prescription Zactran for BRD treatment and control in high-risk cattle. Get a rapid response plus 10-day treatment and control in a single dose so you can stop worrying and get back to business. For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. Don't worry yourself sick. Talk to your veterinarian about a real alternative for BRD treatment and control. Because it's critical, it's Zactran. From Marielle, a leading animal health company. To stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, check out beefusa.org. You'll find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus, link to NCBA programs like the blog, Beltway Beef, updates on the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Connect today at beefusa.org. Hello, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week, we travel the country to bring you the latest cattle industry news and information. Check us out at cattlemantocattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. The world is on a diet. Seems no matter where you look, every fruit cake with a recipe has got a diet book. But I think if they were honest, I'll bet they'd all concede the omnivorous indifference. 
of a cowboy is all you need. He's in tune with Mother Nature and can live off the land, from the mountains of Montana to the muddy Rio Grande. He's the ultimate consumer. He'll eat anything he finds. Well, I've seen him lick the peel and paint off Forest Service signs or chew a steel fence post just to get down to the meat. He'll eat playing cards and bob wire. Anything a cow would eat. A drumstick from a buzzard. <laughs> or a wilted Christmas wreath. And then finish with a railroad spike just to pick his teeth. He'll drink water from a cow track, eat the claws of a grizzly bear, and you won't find no leftovers. He eats feathers, bone, and hair. He makes hunters run for cover. He scares hikers half to death. And he leaves no trace behind him. <sighs> Just the smell of his bad breath. And if you doubt what I have told you, I assure you that it's right. I have painted you a picture of a cowboy's appetite. And though it may not look too pretty, it's exactly like I've drawn it. He'd probably eat a bale of hay if you put apple cider on it. So the world keeps on a jogging and a sipping diet pop. But the cowboy and his tapeworm ride the range and eat nonstop. So if you're overweight, and worried, you should dine with him a while, because there ain't no chubby cowboys in existence in the wild. You can join me for dinner later. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter, for those dietary guidelines. We always enjoy our visits with you. There are so many great reasons to become a member of NCBA, and one of them is the chance to read The National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. And there's even an online version which enables you to read the latest issue on the go. A subscription is included free when you become a member of NCBA. Joining is easy, just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us online at beefusa.org. There's more Cattlemen to Cattlemen still ahead, so stay with us. Carges. Um, this is my husband Brock. We have two girls, Karina and Jessica. Both girls can pull cattle, doctor, process anything that we need them to do. Using products to help keep the calves healthy, it helps my parents to be less stressful, it helps them to be at home more, and it helps pay more bills when you don't have to worry about the cattle. I'd say 98, 99% of our cattle are high risk. We've never seen a response due to a metaphylaxis like we have with the Draxon. I think Draxon has a major role in any operation as far as your viability and your long-term outlook. And how do you quantify having a peace of mind to take a vacation for a week or leave work early to go watch a basketball game? You can't quantify that. Important safety information for Draxon. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Do not use in dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Effects on reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA, they look at the facts, they look at the history, and they look what's good for the industry. It's important to be NCBA members just because of what NCBA does. They keep us informed about a lot of things that are going on nationwide. The reason we're an NCBA member is we think that it's the best voice that the cattle people have. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. Back on those Texas plains. Join us, Riders in the Sky, for sizzling hot San Antonio. It's the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Woo! So grab the family and head to Texas for the latest cattle industry information and education, plus some fun and entertainment 
with us. <laughs> it's an event you won't want to miss. Join us in San Antonio, Texas, February 4th through February 7th. There's plenty more information at BeefUSA.org. And we'll be back on those Texas plains. See you there, saddle pals. <laughs>